the only charcoal I've ever used has been for cooking. And I mean, this is kind of like cooking a drink. I'm not a very good cook. Welcome back to another episode of the Whiskey Layman. I'm Mac, and this is Matt, and this is an episode I'm not really looking forward to. No, I can't say that I'm looking forward to it either. When I first said that I wanted to try whiskeys, I, uh, I told my friends, and we collected a number of bottles that had been left over from various parties, and this was one of the ones we tried on that fateful evening. Um, as I recall, I did not enjoy this. Yeah, I'm gonna have to agree with you there, Mac. This uh, this was probably my least favorite whiskey I've tried in our short period of time trying whiskeys, and it really made me not want to continue doing this until I tried some better ones. Sure, uh, but that was really early on, yeah. right? So maybe yeah. we've developed a taste for this. Boy, I hope so. Yes, and okay. also, I mean, this is this is like quintessential. American whiskey, right? Like, this is Jack Daniels Old Number 7, and I feel like I see this bottle everywhere. It's got to be one of the most popular American whiskeys out there, right? Now, are, are we concerned by the fact that this label is, like, just a plastic print-on, and it's got a plastic top? I feel like some of the other bottles we've covered have been quite a bit more interesting. I mean, it still has, you know, like, engraved or embossed uh, glass, but otherwise it's... I don't know. Feels cheaper, maybe? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It also is considerably darker than I think uh, any of the ones we've tried so far have been. Yeah, I, it's maybe the only thing that's been close to that darkness was the, the bullet bourbon we tried, I think. Could have been, yes. But you're right. The bottle definitely seems to have a lot less uh, flair and fanciness than the Johnny Walker bottles did. There's no gold trim no fancy top hat man walking although there is there's a bunch of like fancy like lettering and stuff going on in it right there yeah there there's a picture of jack daniel on the side too hmm. on the side facing the camera but he has a cowboy hat on not a top hat i think that's kind of like the difference between old world new world kind of stuff right or the difference between america and scotland i mean yeah that's what i said okay yeah do we want to talk any more about this bottle or do we want to open it up and see if our memories are as bad as we thought they were. I'd really like to put off tasting this whiskey as long as possible. All right, so there are multiple <laughs> things going on on the side of this bottle here. Uh, it says that it's been mellowed for smoothness drop by drop through sugar maple charcoal. But then it also says that it's been matured in handcrafted barrels. So it's being poured through charcoal and then put into barrels to age? I don't know. The only charcoal I've ever used has been for cooking. And I mean, this is kind of like cooking a drink. I'm not a very good cook. Um, so maybe I'm not one to ask about cooking drinks. <laughs> one other thing I want to say about the bottle first that I just quickly want to point out is that it's a square bottle again, just like Johnny Walker was. We had commented on the uniqueness of Johnny Walker being a square bottle compared hmm. to most other liquor bottles we had seen. And here we have another square bottle. So maybe that's so a, a whiskey, whiskey thing. Right. Yeah. That's, okay. That's what it is. All right. All right. Let's give it a pour and see what happens. So right off the bat, it seems like it's slightly less dark as you're pouring that. Wow. You missed that. That was a glorious pour. Um, I'm kind yeah. of a professional. All right. I have cleaned up the mess that Mac made on the table as best I could, given our limited resources here. <laughs> Anyways, as I was saying before you decided to give the table a generous taste of this whiskey. I thought the table needed to know. It looks... Why would the table need to know? Never mind. It looks lighter in color in the glass than it does in the bottle, I think. And maybe that's because of how dark all the labels are on mm, this bottle. Yeah, it could be really influencing it. Casting a lot of shadows. And... It is a, it's a pretty dark amber still, though. Like, I mean, it's it doesn't look as dark as when it was in the bottle, but it's still fairly dark. Okay. All right. I'm noticing, hmm. obviously, alcohol. Yeah, mm-hmm. Got that. That's... There's alcohol in it. That's true. Yep. I hate to say this, but I'm getting a lot of uh, dry erase marker here. Yeah, I can see that. Definitely. There's, I guess yeah. there's a, a, a faint hint of vanilla, and I think that's kind of like a theme that I'm getting in most uh, 
things that have been aged in barrels, I believe, is that they impart at least a little vanilla smell. Yeah, I think you're right about that. I think there's going to be a, a hint of vanilla in any of these whiskeys. I can't place this. I, I feel like it's got something that I haven't uh, smelled in other whiskeys that we've tried so far. I almost think it's like a like a maple syrup, I want to say, or something. Or maybe I'm just thinking that because we read the word maple on the, the label. Yeah, I, that's, a, that's a possibility. I don't know if I'm getting maple syrup. I mean, the color kind of looks like maple syrup. It does, yeah. And it's it's actually fairly viscous looking, too. There's quite a bit that clings to the glass, at least in mine, but maybe that's because you poured it on the outside of the glass as well. <laughs> okay, well, here we go. Wish me Still, luck. Still, good luck. Still not sure exactly what I'm smelling. I'm hoping that the taste will help me figure it out. Ooh. Oh, man. So, okay. Whew. All right. I'll let you taste it first here, but the taste, the taste I got was okay when it was in my mouth, but then as soon as I finished swallowing it, it was like this smoky, faintly spicy, bitter taste that I got, kind of. I'm getting a lot of spiciness to it. I'm not sure about smoky so much. It's like, um... Maybe not smoky, but like charred, burned, maybe? It's not good. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a fan of that still. I was really hoping this one would, would turn it around here the second time we tried this, but... That's interesting. Um, it's not my favorite so far, but uh, I definitely had far worse memories of it than the actuality here. Okay. This, uh... It has some similarities to the bullet bourbon, I feel like. Uh, it has a little bit of that... I think it burns as much as the, the bullet did. But I, I think it has a similar spicy taste to it. Okay. Uh, it's like a... I feel like I used the word candy apple before. Uh, like a, a candy apple that's been dipped in spicy cinnamon. Almost. Yeah, I can see what you mean there. There is a, there is a, like a fruitiness to it a little bit in the smell. I don't get that in the taste. It also doesn't doesn't stick around. I feel like uh, a lot of drinks, or at least some of the whiskeys we tried, it kind of like sticks and coats to my throat. Uh, this kind of it burns a little bit and then it kind of just is gone, which I'm okay with. I don't necessarily need that to be like burning in the back of my throat for a sure. long time. I don't like the aftertaste of that. Really? Yeah, it's like a weird, dry cardboardy kind of cardboardy. feeling not taste but like a, a feeling like it just leaves my mouth feeling like scratchy and have you tasted a lot of cardboard in your days i said it doesn't taste like cardboard it feels like cardboard in your mouth yeah if you had to rate it then one out of ten <sighs> i'm gonna say 2.5 2.5 not a fan just not a fan but it's not you think there are things that could be worse I'm leaving that possibility open. Yes. Yeah, so you're, you're also scared to go to the extremes on the scale, just in case something, like, really... Yeah, I don't want to give world. this, I don't want to give this, like, a zero and then find something that's a thousand times worse. This can't be the worst whiskey out there by any means because it's so commonplace in any liquor store, any bar you go to, you see Jack, at least in America, you see Jack Daniels. So there's got to be a reason for that. It's probably just that I don't like it personally. I mean, I guess that it was bound to happen sooner or later that we were going to come across something that yeah. we had to give a bad score to. Absolutely. And, you know, this is all subjective, obviously. Uh, what are you talking about? My opinions are science. Scientifically terrible. Um, okay, if I had to rate this, four and a half. I feel like five is where I would like be comfortable drinking at any time, but not necessarily enjoying it. This, I could still drink from time to time, but it's not something that I'm going to go out of my way and be like, hmm, I haven't had a whiskey in a while. I'm going to go with a Jack Daniels. Now, I feel like if there are other types of Jack Daniels that we come across, I, I'm definitely going to be open to trying them out to see sure, how they compare and contrast to uh, the old number seven. As much as I said it smells, as we both said, it smells like a marker, the smell I thought was way preferable to the taste. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, if it had tasted I, like a marker, I think I would have liked it better. And I don't think I would, uh, you know, never mind. Continue, please. I was going to say the opposite. I thought the, the smell kind of put me off and the taste 
Well, it did have some kind of reminiscence of the smell. I thought the taste was uh, a vast improvement over the smell. I'm not sure how well it would mix with other things, but I'm pretty sure this is like a, another one of those yeah. whiskeys that is commonly mixed. Oh yeah, Jack and Coke, I think, is super common right. drink you'd get at a bar. Probably second to or equal to a Captain and Coke, I Right, would say. yeah. It just feels like this would be overpowering. I guess I'll have to give it a try at some point. Okay. Now that we're back here, and I was unprepared with my phone with the tasting notes from jackdaniels.com, we have pretty much exactly what it says on the bottle, actually. So we have no really new information here on their website other than... I'm really? Re yeah, I'll read it anyways, see if any of this is different. Mellowed drop by drop through 10 feet of sugar maple charcoal. So maybe that's where... 10 they, feet of it? 10 feet of it, yeah. Is it, are they like hol hollowing out a log and like pouring it through it? I don't really understand. Then matured in handcrafted barrels of our own making. Our Tennessee whiskey doesn't follow a calendar. It's only ready when our tasters say it is. We judge it by the way it looks, by its aroma, and of course, by the way it tastes. It's how Jack Daniels himself did it over a century ago, and how we still do it today. And then under that, it has three points it says here. Charcoal mellowed, matured in our own handcrafted barrels, balance of sweet and oaky flavor. That has to be the least information we've gotten on the actual tasting notes. Um, a lot of the other sites use terms that I wouldn't normally associate with taste. Like smooth. This doesn't actually give us much to go on at all besides a little sweet and a little oaky. Yeah. I feel like there's usually more complexities to be had in whiskeys. Is that not your experience? It seems like whiskey companies like to brag about their complexities right. a lot. It is... Unremarkable. Unremarkable. There you have it. Unremarkable Jack Daniels whiskey.